Welcome to this new video. Today I'm going to show you how I installed my water meth injection kit into my Toyota Carina with the 4AG that is now turbo. We have been provided with this kit by Bosphorus Innovations. This is the stage three kit. If you wanna have a look at their products yourself, have a look in the description. I have linked their website down below. And with the code THROTTLEBUDDIES5, you can also save 5% on their whole lineup. Let's start with the installation or what is included in the box. The main components are basically the pump, the controller, the reservoir, the solenoid. Of course, you also have some tubing, some butt connectors, some bolts, some zip ties, just to mount everything. First of all, I'm going to install the tank for the water meth injection. I'm going to do this on this piece of carpeting. Don't worry. Yes, it's solid enough to mount the tank, uh, tank because it is actually bolted down, so it is not going anywhere. I've tried this. It really is a solid mount, so don't worry about that. Um, but that's the best position for the tank. It's important to mount the tank above the pump because the water meth will flow downward and the pump needs to be gravity fed by it because it's not an automatic or it won't suck uh, the water meth directly out of the tank if it would be above it. So make sure that the tank outlet is placed above the pump itself. As you can see here, it is mounted on the rear of the car at a relatively high position and as i said again yes this is a relatively sturdy mount so this is going nowhere even in a hard braking maneuver or in a crash that's important because you don't want to spill methanol or water methanol while 50 50 mixture is non-flammable you still don't want to spill it all over your trunk then i'm mounting the pump by drilling a few holes in my trunk floor um, if you don't want to do that, well, you are probably going to have to drill some holes. That's uh, There's no real way around that. Or you could make a bracket that you mount like on the spare tire holder. Um, but make sure that the pump is also solidly mounted and it has anti-vibration feet. Although it does not vibrate or make a lot of noise, it still is recommended to use those feet just for the sake of it being suspended. Next, I'm going to feed the nylon hosing from the back of the car. So from the pump to the front of the car, I'm running it uh, outside. So I'm running it under the car near the brake and fuel lines. Make sure it isn't kinked. Make sure that it isn't rubbing anywhere or rather that it isn't uh, rubbing on the ground and can't be uh, like hit by any stuff. So that's important because if you rub a hole through it and meth is leaking out there or water methanol is leaking out there that's not a good time because obviously the pressure which the pump is going to be able to uh, make about 10 bar of pressure is going to leak out there and your flow is not going to be the same anymore then i'm installing the bung for the solenoid i'm just drilling a hole in my intake piping well, yes, there is the method to install it in a silicon coupler with the correct bung. I would not recommend that and also Bosphorus wouldn't recommend that. I've talked with them and the more long-term solution would be mounting it in the intake piping itself. The recommendation is in the or like 90 degrees before the throttle body or intake. Uh, in my case, because I'm using ITBs, I mounted 90 degrees before the plenum because that basically is where my throttle body would be located if it was a uh, single throttle body car. Uh, so I'm mounting it there. I'm just drilling a hole and I'm welding the bung in there. There's also a method to tap and thread it in there, but uh, because I have a welder, uh, I'm more comfortable with that and uh, tapping stainless steel is kind of a pain. When I'm done welding it, I'm just going to screw the uh, nozzle in and then screw the solenoid on top and then pull back my intake piping. And after that, I just need to connect the nylon tubing to the uh, solenoid itself so that everything is connected. Obviously, it also needs to connect it, uh, be connected from the tank to the pump, but that's really pretty easy. Just note that the uh, solenoid uses a compression fitting instead of a push-on fitting, so you need to unthread uh, the uh, um, nut first and uh, then push on the hose and thread on the nut again. 
and make sure everything is tight just to be safe and it is not or the hose is not slipping out. Usually that's not really a big issue. But also make sure that all of the connections are good and that nothing is going to leak. Now on to the wiring, which is maybe a little more complicated, but also no rocket science. Uh, I have the controller mounted behind my glove box and the wires just run through there. And because I have a pass through to the engine bay right there, where also my ECU is located. As for wiring, it's pretty simple. So as you can already also tell from the wire gauge, yellow and the black wire are for powering the whole thing so they are a bit thicker and you need to run those to the battery those don't need an ignition switch they are just 100 percent 12 volt even when the car is off because it the system is only armed or only active when the ignition is active and that then a different wire is used so these just go to yellow is for power and black is to ground on your battery. I would suggest using a inline fuse. Then we have another couple of wires. We have a activity or status LED that is already wired in. So you put that somewhere where you can see. So it's basically acting like an activity LED. Then you have a purple wire. This is for the ECU controlled ones. This one here. That goes to your ECU and that's the wire that triggers the actuation of the solenoid and pump. And then we have these here. Those are going to the solenoid itself and those trigger or actuate the solenoid. So that's plus and minus for that. And then lastly, we have another two wires. The white one is the switch for on and off so for arming the system so that means that is put to 12 volts ignition source so, so that only turns the whole system on once ignition is switched on for the solenoid it's similar to a relay you need to top uh, pop the top off it's screwed down with one phillips screw and then you can take this top off and with this casing and then you have one of those is plus the right one and the other side is minus or rather the right side is red and the other side is black. Once you've wired it like this you can put the casing back on and plug it back in. As for choosing the fuse as this is a 30 volt 1 amp pump that means it's gonna pull 30 watts and with a 12 volt system which we are going to use obviously in a car this is about 2.7 or something amps so in theory a 5 amp fuse should be enough though i'm going to use a 10 amp fuse to when the pump kicks on um, provide a little bit more amperage also because the solenoid will pull some some electricity so we want a bit of headroom but don't go too large or you will risk the fuse not doing anything. Wiring here is also pretty simple. We only have two wires from the pump. One is plus, one is minus, and we have two wires coming from the front, which is gonna be the blue and the brown one, as I explained before. And we're just gonna wire them up to the pump. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. As always, if you are wiring stuff, make sure that your connections are good. So I've used uh, butt connectors, so these things. So they are pretty solid and make sure to crimp them right. So they are, they will hold, which is important here because if you lose water, water meth, um, then your engine could blow or whatever. And also make sure to isolate your stuff so that it does, if it touches like bare metal or anything, it does not create a short. So just as a little overview, we have the wiring diagram for the water meth injection kit right here, just to show you what I have exactly done. The main thing that you want to look out for is that you have connected the, uh, the yellow wire to the plus side of the battery and the black wire to ground. This does not have to be the battery, of course, you can ground it on the chassis as well. And then you have, as I have shown, the uh, both wires to the pump. So the brown and the blue wire and 
The next thing would be wiring up the solenoid. These are also just straightforward, the red wire and the black wire to the solenoid itself. And then the only thing, the only two things that are needed uh, is to wire the purple trigger wire into the ECU, which I'm going to show how to configure um, in a few minutes. This is to a uh, depends on your ECU, but it would be best to have PWM output because not all ECUs do want to control the water meth injection uh, to through every output. So you might have to choose which one you're going to use. And you have to connect the pink or this one to a ignition switch. So this means that as soon as the ignition is switched on, this sees 12 volts, so the controller gets power or the signal so that the system is armed and ready to inject. And then as soon as it gets the signal from the ECU with the purple wire, it is uh, actually injecting water meth. The green wire is only for the input into the ECU so that the ECU knows the setup is armed but that's not really needed but you could wire something like this into some input but that's important to note that it's an input and not an output now onto the configuration in tuning studio so there are a few different ways to configure it if you for example are running uh, vvt then the problem is you cannot run vvt and water meth injection at the same time for example if i have water uh, vvt activated the uh, water meth injection is grayed out this is the case for speedwino ecus on anything else um, this is going to be not a problem. I will again in this case disable VVT Although you could run VVT and run the water meth injection with the boost control because if you set that to on and put your uh, Trigger wire onto the boost wire then you could run water meth injection with the boost control method and just use this table as your uh, control for the water meth injection the only problem is with this is that you only have the RPM and TPS axis here. So the problem is there that while you would want to go with a map, so at a certain boost pressure, the uh, water meth injection kicks in. In this case, you would run with, well, at a certain TPS or throttle position and certain RPM water meth kit will kick in which is a little bit of a bummer, but it would still work if the nozzle isn't too big. And um, that could also work if you have to run VVT. The other way would be, of course, with using the normal water methanol system, so water methanol control, which would be here, you just enable that. The water methanol ejection mode would be simple if you are not using the uh, PWM method but just normal on or off and then you can set your parameters here so your minimum TPS your minimum RPM so usually you are going to set this uh, as soon as you are at a desired boost level for example before you are seeing knock or even at a lower boost level to up the timing in those areas where water methanol is uh, injected of course, you will be able to run a lot more boost and timing with water methanol. So this might be like 3000 RPM and you want, maybe you want to start it at like 0.3 bar of boost, so 130 kPa, which would be like 4 to 5 PSI. The PWM output or the frequency, if you're using the simple algorithm, this is not PWM, so it's just on or off and you would choose the board default pin if you are going to use the VVT pin. The other options, they are dependent on what system you have. The output pin, uh, the enabled pin is, if you are running like a boost solenoid or like a switch to run more boost or whatever, you can use this to get the boost level up if you uh, if the water methanol injection is uh, working, but doesn't really make any sense for us. Um, there's also the tank input so that you can implement a fuel uh, or a level sensor that shows if the tank is empty 
and then automatically the timing you have added right here or some sort of mechanism is activated to reduce boost pressure or timing or in general cut the ignition completely. Uh, this can be set here and also an indicator for the tank so like a tank level sensor on how much is actually left in the tank um, but that's actually not really possible to wire up with the speed we know easily so you better ignore that i guess on the bottom here you can also select or um, select the advanced correction personally i don't like to use this um, because i would just use either uh, the intake air temperature correction along with knock detection um, to at a specific threshold when water methanol is active you obviously would have a really low intake temperature so you would notice that and you could go to so you could just go to more ignition advance in your map and then if you are seeing uh, intake temperatures that would be with the water methanol setup deactivated you can just set a retard of the ignition timing from that specific air intake temperature onward. That would also be kind of a safety if your uh, tank runs dry, then you would have a safety that the ignition timing is actually reduced because in this case on the Speedwinos, uh, there is no real way to uh, reduce boost pressure or ignition cut when the system is empty. This method should be possible on almost any standalone, even if it's a little older or simpler. Um, it should work either by using the nitrous um, functionality or it even might have water meth injection functionality built in. Lastly, I would want to test the water methanol injection. So in my case, I've set it to 1% TPS and 1200 RPM. So it will activate there. So just to test it if it will actually actuate and as you can see it works when i actuate the throttle so i can see it is injecting uh, into my intake piping i did this with water just to test and so then now i can clean up the cables and i can install everything properly or rather like clean up the wiring and the install is pretty much finished and I can go and have a drive and see what difference it makes. And we will be following up on this with a few videos on showing the difference on what water methanol injection actually does, how well it works and uh, how much you can get out of your car by using it. That's it from me. I wish you a nice day and goodbye.